the survival and prosperity of humankind and for the maintenance of all ecosystems. A corollary of the importance of land for human activity is a high competition for and pressure on land due to population growth, urbanization, speculation, agriculture, and nature conservation, and so on. Land governance is therefore essential for managing this competing interest and achieving sustainable development. The bank has been working together with the UN Economic Commission for Africa to actualize the African Union Land Declaration and to support our regional member countries in national visioning. The bank is also a founder partner together with the African Union Commission, the UN Economic Commission for Africa of the Land Policy Initiative, which is now the African Land Policy Center. Upon request by the African Union member states to establish a platform for policy dialogue, lesson sharing, and learning at continent level, the idea of biennial all African Land Policy Conference was burst. Ever since its inaugural conference in 2014, the bank has continued to fully support this scientifically proved platform. The fourth edition of the Conference on Land Policy in Africa will take place in Kigali from 2 to 4 November 2021 under the team Land Governance for Safeguarding Arts, Culture and Heritage towards the Africa we want. Whether we live in a desert, savanna, forest or mountain environment has profound implications for our arts, IS2, audio check. Can you hear us? Please turn on your video. Razak, can you turn on your video? Natasha, are you there? Yes, I can see him. Yes, so uh, my friend, do you want me to spotlight or you do the, you send the video? Uh, hold on, please, Razak. So, So now we have one. Can you check? Can you can you put it on, on picture in picture? There are three. There are three signings, but every 15 minutes they will change. Yes. They will change us initially as people on the board. Yes. So right now that's the signing for this one? Yes. You see? The, the excellent, excellent. Can you stay with us, Razak? His head. No, but his hands are more important. But, uh, yes, but you know, this thing, it's a big I, it, I was expecting to make it. Razak, can you move a little bit to the so back? His hands are the ones that we care about, huh? I think it's all, yes, back. Uh, the, it, I think it's, uh, what, are, what do you want? No. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, um, I'm trying to explain to you that it's a bit of a interpreter. So oh. we can't hear from you as you're speaking. If the captioner is there, you can totally follow your instructions on, on the list that you've given us from the captions. So is the captioner there already? Uh, 
Natasha, can you help us uh, uh, turn on your video? We want to compare. Yes, for example, how about her now? So pick her up. Him is fine. Okay, now re remove her from remove her from the main screen. No, it's hard to be picture in picture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we are working on it, Natasha. Thank you. So when yes. she's on, yeah. what's the setting of your, um, you see these things, wait, where is it? Which you see one? those things up here? Ah. There's a setting for Zoom where you don't have to see them. This will not, this, we are not streaming this. We no. are streaming this. You know what I'm saying? You see, we're getting from you. We're getting her from you, right? So, okay, let me put it on uh, full screen like this. Still, still the same. Now, now this is the full screen. No, where, for where her, are you getting what this? I'm seeing on Zoom. It's from her. This is her screen entirely. No, you see these two little marks here? These two. Yes. Yeah, there is a setting where we don't have to see them. No, no, that, that's the system mm. that you, sh you should come. It's a spotlight thing. Unless you remove the spotlight. No, it's a, because we, we don't see them when we change. Gideon, because you, you don't saying? spotlight, because the... You know how we stream and we don't see these two things? I'm wondering why we're seeing it from here. Because I spotlight, uh, for, uh, let me remove it. Now it's like this. You don't see this. Okay, now pick it up again. They have to come and sign in on site. Yeah, no problem. That's fine. I will fix it on this side.
Wait, to move? To her left. Natasha, can you move to your left a little bit? Again. Again? Keep going. Keep going, please. More? More? More. And more. Okay. Now, yeah. what's the widest hand signal that she do? No, no, no. Wait, just wait. No. What's the widest hand signal? No, no, no. no. Just one more. Move on. Well, the widest hand signal. To the left, please. To, to the left. Yes, yes. You know? A little bit. A little bit. Very little. A little bit, please. Yes. Okay. Now, okay. Can she mark that spot and stay there? Can, can you stay there? Throughout the rest of the event. The yeah. Now. So, uh, d during the event, you stand there, okay? Can we go to Razak? Wait, sorry, this, the box is not looking okay because I, you're cutting me right here and my sign is placed just a little bit down here. So you won't be able to see my class because if I sign here like what I'm doing right now, I'm moving my hands, you can't see it. Yeah. Okay, can you see where it cuts? Yeah, up, 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 up. Can you put your hand down? Yeah, we tell her we can see it. The maximum. No, that, no, I mean, we're just giving an example. Uh, what is the maximum hand down during, during yeah. interpretation? So this would be my hand down right here. So we can see you then. Right, so I need this box to be a little bit. Can you stretch it a little bit more for me? Because this is too small. Okay. Can we end up and how about to the to the up? Up a bit. No, that thing will come in, yeah? Okay, tell her can she take a step back? Can you not do that? Can you not take a little bit of a small step back? Hi. Uh, is it possible to take a small step back? Okay, just then crop that bit out. Let's see. Okay, uh, do we have enough headroom now for you? Okay, all right, thank you. You're good? Okay, we're gonna live with that. Aya, what's next? Um, my colleague would just like to make a contribution then. Maya, please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So, we, we're done with Natasha. This is Maya. Hi, yes. Um, I think what uh, Natasha is trying to explain is that the size of the interpreter's box in the overall picture is too small. Okay. So what happens is that it does not is not comprehensible anymore to understand the interpretation if, if the box is too small. It's almost like there's a muffled sound on the microphone. So the smaller we get, Sorry? I mean, that the less understanding is. understandable it is. Yeah, so let's try and figure out whether we can do something about it here. Um, no, uh, I don't know. I will, I will so if I, if I may make a suggestion, oh, normally we have to do it too. Yeah, let's do it too. 
Okay, so can you do a bunch of this? You have this room. Like, like this. And then this is this is final Which it should be like this. Show me a camera shot. It's better uh, for other. So you see how he has it here? He's like next to each other. Why don't you take this video? Forget the picture in picture thing. There it has to be like half half as well. So do it for me and then what you should do on the background. Maya, can you step back a little bit? Not Natasha, we're good with you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, we're going, we're going to fix it this now. And we could show how much is one time. Her, the other time. What are you, show me what you're going to stream this, yeah? This is what you're going to show? Yes. What so you're going to show on webinar? During the webinar, okay. it's going to be this, the, the room, and the sign room. Got it. It has to be half. So what you do, listen guys, can you guys show us something? You see what she has there? Uh, Maya, how do you see it? Good, yes? So what I, can I, what I see here is I see the picture, right? The opening slide. Yes. I see, I see myself, I see myself. Yes, on the spotlight, you see the room and yourself, yeah? Half, half. So this will be fine. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Let it be like this. We're fixing it right yes. now. Yeah. No, wait. It's me. Okay. Right? Okay. So, give me five minutes. I'll sort no, no, this out. Stop. Yeah. So, you need that now. Lena, the camera. Lena, the camera. Then take this to you and talk to the camera. Yes, that's me. 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 Monday, can you check uh, is there many two English and French interpreters? Hello? Hold on, please. Can can you get a headset for us? Can can I have one bit there to oh, check yeah. for the test? You the one you had yesterday in return? Yeah, yeah. Hello. 
تجست which which بوز هلو بريندا yes yes I hear you thank you yeah yes Lamin, bonjour. Hello, Lamin. Yes, hi. How are you? We are loud, loud and clear. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Just sort it out. You know the, the guy that used to control in the computer? Yeah. But now I know. So what you're going to do is give us that team. That's smart. And you'll be controlling. Yes. yes. So I'll we're control. taking this seat. That's what I was We're going to... Because the picture in picture thing, it's always problematic. Yeah, so we're going so to take we need her. to make it half and half. Yeah, we'll take her. We'll take your screen, then yes. take her only. You'll be controlling interfaces anyway. So yes, we'll just rely on you on moving okay. that. The one we have. The one we have. Uh, no, you know, for, for typing, as you know, they have to turn on the LED. No. So they'll have the videos on throughout? Yeah, okay, everything. Okay, now, yeah? okay, so now you take him. Natasha, please give us video. Thank you. The video, uh, Natasha. Maya, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Natasha, can you hear me? Can you give us a video? I mean, you don't have to be there. Just turn on your video. Yes, now I'm giving you a spotlight. Valentin. 
Okay. Can, 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 you, can you stay connected on the video? Thank you. Only from this end, this is only language that are going out. Oh. Why don't you just send this? Yeah, because we know that we send a bit of That's why I need to take pictures. Yeah, because you're taking... Yeah, yeah, that's because the computer, you can just see this. Well, why don't you take this? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No, no, this, 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 this cannot be a big yeah. picture. You see, what I would be like, you guys, what would get... Guys,
Good morning. Bonjour. Mwaramtse. Uh, and I'll be picking up something, I think, from Ghana a little bit later on. I'll be your host today. My name is Arnold Quizera. I'm from CNBC Africa. And thank you for making it to another event in Kigali, Rwanda. We love to meet in uh, Rwanda's capital, Kigali. And today's event is going to be a special one. But before we get into those details, I just need to give you a few housekeeping rules. Uh, let's have our phones in silence. Uh, this is a televised event. So please, let's keep our phones in silence. Uh, if you can, you can put it on airplane mode. It's going to be one quick hour. And we have great, great conversations uh, coming up. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Exactly. It's Monday, 1st of November. Let's, let's have some life. Let's have some life. Uh, let, let's stand up a little bit. Let's stand up a little bit. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. I'm such a firm believer in uh, exercise. Um, it has helped me on a personal level. Um, but let's, I want us to stretch out, because uh, we're starting the last two months of the year. K December is around the corner. So you know, let's, let's, stretch, let's stretch a bit. Uh, say good morning to your neighbor on the left. <laughs> uh, and to those who have walls next to them, you can you know, peace sign to them. Uh, say good morning to your neighbor on the right. Good morning to your neighbor at the back or at the front. Yeah, let's keep the social distance as well. Yeah. Uh, let, let's touch our toes for those who still can, the younger people. And the older ones, just put your hands up. <laughs> just five, quick five seconds. Quick five seconds. Thank you, thank you. We can take our seats. Thank you.
Sí, pues. Land is a bedrock of our natural capital. It is essential both for the survival and prosperity of humankind and for the maintenance of all ecosystems. A corollary of the importance of land for human activity is a high competition for and pressure on land due to population growth, urbanization, speculation, agriculture, and nature conservation and so on. Land governance is therefore essential for managing this competing interest and achieving sustainable development. The bank has been working together with the UN Economic Commission for Africa to actualize the African Union Land Declaration and to support our regional member countries in national visioning. The bank is also a founder partner together with the African Union Commission, the UN Economic Commission for Africa of the Land Policy Initiative, which is now the African Land Policy Center. Upon request by the African Union member states to establish a platform for policy dialogue, lesson sharing, and learning at continent level, the idea of biennial all African Land Policy Conference was burst. Ever since its inaugural conference in 2014, the bank has continued to fully support this scientifically proved platform. The fourth edition of the Conference on Land Policy in Africa will take place in Kigali from 2 to 4 November 2021 under the theme land governance for safeguarding arts, culture, and heritage towards the Africa we want. Whether we live in a desert, savanna, forest, or mountain environment has profound implications for our arts, cultures, social systems, or spiritualities. The theme of the conference, therefore, provides an opportunity to examine the interactions between land governance and cultural and creative sectors. The African Development Bank and its partners look forward to your participation in the fourth edition of the Conference on Land Policy in Africa. Thank you.
the Africa Land Policy Center uh, is extremely excited to be organizing this year's conference on land policy in Africa. Uh, the conference has allowed us to fill a gap that we identified in the context of land policy development and implementation. Every year what we try to do is we come up with a theme that is aligned to the Africa Union theme. This year we will be examining issues of heritage and culture and the arts. And it's a very interesting one because as you know, land governance in our continent uh, pertains to issues of spirituality, it pertains to issues of economic development and conservation, and also our own politics. But we have not really interrogated the issue of culture and heritage. And it will be very useful for us to examine uh, what are the key linkages? What would it mean to have poor land governance? It really would mean that we are not able to preserve that culture and that heritage. Our heritage sites would not be preserved. Uh, we would not be involving our communities. And so once we involve our communities in that conversation of conservation and preservation, we are more assured that we will have a sustainable means of preservation. The issue of women's land tenure security is extremely important. And in this context where we are discussing issues of culture, we know that women are the ones who mainly safeguard our environment. They are the ones who are using the wood. They are the ones who are uh, cultivating on the land. And it is very important that we engage with them and look at how securing land tenure for women would help to promote not just agriculture, but also arts, heritage, and culture. And so the AU agenda on land is especially focused on the issue of women's land rights. And we also remember have a target of 30%, where we have a 30% for allocating land rights to women. And we hope that this is going to be achieved because it promotes Agenda 2063. If land governance is centralized, is top down, it means that communities don't feel like they are part of that process. If land governance is inclusive, if the land governance processes, including policy development, are inclusive of our communities, inclusive of our tradition of governance, inclusive of women, inclusive of our youth, our pastoralists, then it means that all of us have a stake in it. We will contribute to policies that then define how we govern this land in a manner that we ourselves feel part of the, of, of the solutions to some of our problems. So we are hopeful that our artists, our filmmakers, our storytellers will be coming this year and we'll be listening to them. And we'll be looking at how we can then look at the ties to land and how it inspires the artists and continues to inspire them. How about African fashion? So when we talk about fashion, it's really tied to our landscapes. It's tied to our land, it's tied to the cloth, if you look at the mud cloth, you look at the kente cloth, you look at others, the designs on the land, north, south, throughout the continent. So we are quite excited that uh, we can use this as a basis for prosperity and development, but the basis of it is good land governance. I would want to welcome everybody to the conference and enjoy yourselves. It's going to be a conference like no other. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. 
Good morning. Bonjour. Welcome to this conference on land policy in Africa. Uh, once again, my name is Arnold Quizera. I'll be your host today. Uh, and I hope we are going uh, to pick and take away a few things from this policy. I was just, uh, the first two videos that played there, and uh, I took away something regarding equity, equality, and how the land tenure system uh, on the continent uh, needs uh, to be amplified and moved faster to enable equity and equality if we are to achieve uh, some of the targets that we have set uh, ourselves out for. Uh, there's the AU Agenda 2063, and I think that's going to be a big part of our conversation. Thank you for making the time, and thank you for being with us in Rwanda's capital, Kigali, uh, for this meeting. It's always lovely uh, to have you meet in Kigali. Now, uh, without any further ado, first of all, I would like to apologize for the delay. Um, uh, it wasn't a technical one this time, but uh, apologies that we are starting on African time. I'm not a big fan of that African time wording, but it seems like we've started this month on African time. I want to thank our hosts as well, uh, Rwandan Convention Bureau, Africa Development Bank, uh, and uh, ECA, the Economic Commission for Africa, uh, for having us here. We also want to thank uh, the German embassy for having us uh, here as well. Now, uh, I, I hope the breakfast was, was okay, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the performance from the Inore Dance Group. So a hand clap to Inore Dance Group for keeping us alive earlier. So without any uh, further ado, um, I would like to reintroduce uh, in order, dance group to give us a welcoming special performance. Over to you. Naramutseneza. <laughs> turi torero intayeberana z'u Rwanda tugiye kubereka umukino ushingiye hanini kubikorwa byiganje mu buhinzi ariko tubinyujije mu mbyino no mu ndirimbo zacu gakondo please ladies and gentlemen enjoy our traditional performance we thank you I have Come on, 
Thank you. Club for the Nordic Dance Group. <laughs> Even some of us who live here, every time you see this, uh, this dance, it feels like it's the first time. Uh, and talking about first times, I think it's uh, about the time we go through our first speech of the day. Uh, our first remarks coming in from, uh, allow me to introduce uh, Miss Mama Keita, the Director Sub Regional Office for East, Eastern Africa at the United Nations. Economic Commission for Africa. Just a quick reminder, as she makes uh, her way to the podium to give her speech, uh, you can give it from your seat if you want to, or you could come to the podium. Uh, a reminder to our guests that uh, you can, there's uh, multilingual translations, so if you want to listen to this in French, please, uh, you can use uh, uh, the translation devices uh, that are on your seats. Mr. Patrick Carrera, representing Honorable Minister Dr. Jean d'Arc Mujawa Maria, Minister of Environment of the Republic of Rwanda. Um, uh, Son Excellence Monsieur Sakombi Molendo, Ministre des Affaires Forestières de la République Démocratique du Congo. 
Her Excellency Ambassador Joseph Asako, Commissioner Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy, and Sustainable Development, the African Union Commission. Excellency Mrs. Aisa Touré Sar, Resident Representative, African Development Bank. Excellency Dr. Thomas Kurz, Ambassador of Germany to the Republic of Rwanda. Dear participants here in Kigali and also joining virtually, all protocol duly observed. Good morning and welcome to this conference on behalf of Mrs. Vera Songwe, United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the, of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Welcome to the fourth conference on land policy in Africa. I would like to begin my remarks by expressing my gratitude to the government of Rwanda for co-hosting this conference. I also want to recognize the leadership of the African Union Commission and partnership of the African Development Bank for our 15-year-old joint partnership aimed at supporting our member states to improve land governance. The biennial conference on land policy is a key output to our joint partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's conference is being held under the shadow of the COVID-19 pandemic, which continues to challenge humanity in fundamental ways, amplifying in the process our, glo our global interconnectedness and interdependence. No country or continent can rely on its own knowledge, tools, and resources to tackle challenges like COVID-19. Similarly, we all need one another to share knowledge, experiences, and leverage resources towards land governance reforms to transform our countries and continents. We established the Conference on Land Policy in Africa in 2014, and I'm very happy to note that it is now a major platform for experience sharing and learning in support of the effective implementation of the African Union agenda on land from a wide range of perspectives. The theme of the conference echoes the decision of the African Union that 2020 be the year of arts, culture, heritage. Furthermore, at the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly, the year 2020 was declared the International Year of Creative Economy for Sustainable Development. Ladies and gentlemen, the creative economy is among the most rapidly growing sectors of the world economy, generating over 30 million jobs worldwide and employing more young people under 30 years old than any other sector. Through cultural and creative industries, income can be generated, job created, trade opportunities increased, and social harmony enhanced through music, film, software, advertising, entertainment, architecture, virtual arts, publishing, and tourism. All these opportunities can be greatly facilitated by good land governance that facilitates sustainable management and use of forests, landscapes, rivers, and other ecological resources for economic and social benefit for culture and creative industries. There is no doubt that land is the greatest heritage for Africa and Africans, whose value for humanity transcends from one generation to the next. By developing effective governance policies and practices to secure uh, this heritage, we will harness its potential for economic, social, and environmental, environmental transformation and contribute to eliminating poverty and hunger through increased productivity, promoting sustainable agriculture by harnessing technology, innovation, and indigenous knowledge systems, advancing gender equality and women empowerment, 
and promoting people-centered economic growth. The development and implementation of land policies requires knowledge of the issues of all levels of society. There is a need for targeted data and collection and information on land claims and management to promote responsible investments while ensuring access to productive resources, including fertilizers, seeds, storage, facilities, among others. Of utmost importance is harnessing good practices to secure land rights for women and for youth, and to benefit from those opportunities. Here, I want to commend the government of Rwanda for great efforts in, secu in securing land for women and also protecting landscapes for wildlife that form the basis for a thriving tourism sector. Sharing of such knowledge among countries is critical, yet it is often hindered by the way the knowledge is packaged and disseminated. We just attended a demonstration where Rwanda is now using blockchain technology to secure land uh, documents, and this is really amazing, and we really hope that it's going to be replicated in other African countries. Ladies and gentlemen, working with artists and the creative sector, technical information can be simplified and made more accessible to our communities. Land governance information can be rendered in music, film, visual arts, short stories and animation, and presented in different African languages for better reach. Equally, in developing land policies, we have a responsibility to secure spaces that have significance for community, be it heritage or scarce sites with spiritual importance. They may also have historical or cultural relevance. The recognition of lands as heritage with political, economic, social, and environmental and spiritual significance provides an opportunity for inclusive policies that protect diverse interests. It is also important to examine critically large-scale and land-based investments, most of which sits on customary land to support more equitable distribution of benefit and risk. This way, we ensure private sector engagement can be economically viable, equitable, and sustainable, reducing land-based conflict and safeguarding the environment. This, ladies and gentlemen, requires us to intensify relevant research and analysis of data that guide interventions. This conference is a good opportunity to reflect on and reaffirm our commitment to the aspiration of the African Union agenda for land, our contribution to Agenda 2063. We are witnessing steady progress in the integration of land governance frameworks in continental, regional, and national development strategies and agriculture investment plans. Academic institutions are reforming their land governance curricula to incorporate the demand of industry and inject new dynamics driven by research and innovation. The continent is also praying more at paying more attention to indigenous knowledge systems to address food deficits and mitigate climate change. Traditional institutions and alternative dispute resolution mechanisms are being utilized alongside statutory law to address disputes. But more still needs to be done. As a tripartite partner with the African Union Commission and the African Development Bank, the ECA is committed to implementing the African Union land agenda through the Africa Land Policy Center and by mainstreaming land governance issues into program of the Economic Commission for Africa. We express our deep appreciation to our part, the, uh, development partners, especially the government of Germany, who, with technical assistance from GIZ, have provided immense support in the auspices of the Strengthening Ad 
advisory capacities for land governance in Africa program. One of the key outputs of this flagship program, named the Network of Excellence on Land Governance in Africa, which has seen universities review curricula and develop training programs to equip land professionals with skills needed to improve land government and management in Africa. I urge more development partners to join with us to ensure the African Union aspirations are achieved as we progress toward 2063. Let me close by urging all participants to take advantage of the invaluable platform provided by the Conference on Land Policy in Africa to share knowledge and experiences, build alliances and networks to amplify our collective impact. I thank you very much for your attention. Mrs. Mama Keita, Director, Sub-Regional Office for Eastern Africa at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Thank you very much for those opening remarks. Now, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Mrs. Aisa Sarture, the Country Manager for the African Development Bank. The Commissioner, Agriculture and Rural Economy, Blue Economy, and a Sustainable Environment at the African Union Commission, Her Excellency, Madame Josepha Leonard Correa Sajo, Monsieur Aimé Sakombi Molendo, Ministre des Affaires Sociales de la République Démocratique du Congo, Mr. Patrick Carrera, Permanent Secretary at the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources of the Republic of Rwanda, the director of the sub-regional office for East Africa of UNECA, Madame Mama Keita, His Excellency Thomas Kirk, ambassador of Germany in Rwanda, colleagues from African Development Bank, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Muramotse, good morning, bonjour. I'm pleased to provide remarks on the opening of the fourth All-African Comprehensive Land Policy Conference, a conference that has demonstrated its role as a convening policy, advocacy, and lesson-sharing platform towards the implementation of the African Union Land Declaration. It's, it is also a conference in which African Union members, countries who are also African Development Bank member countries, come not only to report on their respective country progress of the implementation of the land declaration, but also to take stock as well as benchmark respective country performance, challenges, and future identi and further identify area for capacity building and research. The topic for this fourth conference, land governance for safeguarding art, culture, and heritage towards the Africa we want, is well fitted towards examining land from a cultural, art, and a heritage lens. Currently, there is an ongoing debate about traditional land tenure as a bottleneck to agricultural modernization, gender empowerment, inclusive development, and creation of sustainable path to vibrant rural economies. It's my considered opinion that by the end of this conference, we should have known how to help small scale farmers derive more economic gains from their lands. Given the theme of the conference and its recognition of African Union Commission Declaration of the year 2021 as Year of Agri African Culture 
arts and fashion, I'll try to restrict my remark to that as opposed to talking about matters of agriculture and land or the challenges of promoting agricultural mechanism, mechanization in the continent. I'm aware that technical experts continental-wide will, over the next three days, delve into that subject in relation to its impact on culture. In that respect, it's important to keep in mind as you discuss the following points. Both religions and African culture links the creation of humanity to soil and to land. The soil being the substance for which, from which humanity was created, we therefore find ourselves connected to it. Any denial, therefore, or restriction to anyone accessing or using it amounts to violating uh, the essence of our own creation. Look at the land, therefore, from both those both perspective, context, cultural context, we all come to an agreement that it has shaped the emergence, development, and growth of nations, and as such, has the political, economic, social, and cultural facets associated to it. From the two perspectives, it is of significant importance to us to examine the modalities for everyone to have equal access, use, and control of it. Control of land in developing and middle-income countries still portrays complex interplay, economic, social, cultural, and political power. In many African countries and beyond, land is culturally tied to traditional practices. The centrality of land to African economies has therefore has to be therefore carefully handled and examined in respect to such traditional uh, culture and heritage. As we discuss this topic today and the days to come, there is a need to tap into such indigenous knowledge, cultural knowledge, to help better inform policy making and even understand why uh, some agricultural development project and program have a slow uptake. Allow me to draw examples for, from the Karamajong pastoral people of Uganda and the Himba's people of Namibia. We all live in semi-desert lands. Severe uh, droughts and food insecurity is a common occurrence in both communities. And yet, studies have strongly demonstrated and established a strong attachment of these communities to their land, culture, and fashion. At worst time of drought and other calamities, these communities practice the culture of evoking rain through their ancestors. And likewise, when they have good harvests, they will also thank those ancestors. Therefore, this is an ex these are examples that we need to take into, consider uh, into consideration in land policies. Who should respect traditional communities in such situation? A joint community land title should be given to them in order to prevent their land, culture, and identities. The African Development Bank and the African Land Policy Center have been involved in helping to build the capacity of African traditional authorities to see their roles beside others as custodians of the land for their people and for the future. Communities leaders are uniting force and switched over communities' resources and assets, including lands. Our concern today is on equitable access, use, and ownership by and for all the community's members, especially when it comes to women and youth. Secondly, has inclusive, consultative, free prior, uh, and informed concern, consent, sorry, should be derived from the entire community, inclusive again of women and youth. In the case of intended for an investment in the land uh, or in the resources therein. 
We have gone a long way with our traditional authorities and institutions. In the last land conference in 2019, our community leaders in their respective capacities signed a declaration to equitably share lands with women and youth and to recognize women in particular to free access to land and to ownership of land. Our traditional authorities who are with us today will attest to this and may also report uh, the extent to which that signed declaration has been implemented in their respective traditional area of jurisdiction. Poverty eradication and sustainable inclusive development should unveil every citizen and equal access, control, ownership of land, land being a key input, as my sister Mama said, to food production and a major soft, uh, source of capital to the poor. The importance of land and its unequal distribution between women and men needs to be given more greater attention in any program on land reform and women's land rights in Africa. We at the African Development Bank, we are very resolute to this in our overall policies, strategies, programming, and project implementation and designs. We shall furthermore continue to ensure that all member countries integrate land in the center of their national development and policy frameworks. Keep advocating for the development of poor, poor land policy making processes, continue building the capacity of national land institutions and support inclusive land tenure rights in the delivery of the, our member countries' strategy and sustainable economic frame, uh, transformation frameworks. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, African Development Bank and the African Union Land Declaration, we nurture and foster our partnership with UNECA and African Union Commission through strengthening our tripartite initiative, the African Land Policy Center. Thank you for listening to me. Merci beaucoup. Another hand clap for uh, Mrs. Isa Saraturi, the country manager for the African Development Bank. Uh, I think you saw a special guest join us a little bit later. Uh, it's uh, the Land Affairs Minister for the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo. He will be uh, as well speaking to us uh, shortly. Uh, for now, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, His Excellency Dr. Thomas Kurtz, uh, the German ambassador to Rwanda. Guten Morgen. Oops. Your Excellency, Ambassador Josefa Sacco, Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy, and Sustainable Environment of the African Union Commission. Honorable Sakombi Molendo, Minister of Land Affairs, Democratic Republic of Congo. Ms. Mama Keita, Director, Sub-Regional Office for Eastern Africa, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Mrs. Aisa Tarturi, Country Manager, African Development Bank, and last not least, our host, the Government of Rwanda, represented by Mr. Patrick Carrera, Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Environment. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, everybody. And thank you very much for the opportunity to briefly address this distinguished audience. Germany is honored to be, <clears throat> to be a long-standing partner of the African Union in enhancing land governance. And we're honored to be part of this important biannual conference. Land is at the center of socioeconomic development in Africa, as Africa hosts more 
than half of the world's available arable and yet uncultivated land, which, if used sustainably, can provide the con can improve the continent's economic growth. Linked to land are agriculture, food systems, and land investments, which are again crucial to enhance income and reduce poverty rates. Good land governance is therefore critical to achieving the African Union's Agenda 2063 and the UN SDGs. Unfortunately, weak land governance and insecure land rights are still significant development challenges. In 2006, the African Union Commission and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and the African Development Bank acknowledged the import importance of land governance by establishing the Land Policy Initiative and most recently transforming its secretariat into the African Policy Center, ALPC. Germany, through GIZ, has been supporting the ALPC's capacity development program over the past six years through our joint program, Strengthening Capacities for Land Governance in Africa, SLGA. A key flagship of the SLGA is the Network of Excellence on Land Governance in Africa, uh, NELGA. NELGA was established to strengthen capacities of universities and other centers of excellence for evidence-based land policy and institutional reforms. Since 2016, the LPC through NELGA has worked on closing land governance capacity gaps. This includes, for example, the review of curricula, development and implementation of master PhD programs, and short-term courses. Advanced research fellowships, scholarships, and training of over a thousand recipients across Africa, both for established land governance experts and young policymakers. With this, our joint program, LSGA, supports the implementation of the AU Declaration on Land by integrating land policy into country strategies. While monitoring its implementation, mainstreaming innovative approaches, and developing, developing scalable approaches. Let me share a few key messages with you. Effective land governance will guarantee survival, protection, and development for all, especially women and marginalized groups who depend on land for survival. Platforms such as this conference should therefore provide a convergence point for policymaking and research, research by, for example, reviewing best practices and co-designing co land systems. Land also continues to have significant traditional and historical implication for Africa's peoples. It is therefore timely that this conference, in line with the AU's declaration of 2021 as the year of arts, culture, and heritage, is looking at the land space through a customs and creative lens. As these structures can provide resilient factors in influencing the land governance space. Let me conclude. Our common goal is to ensure the sustainable development of the continent and empowerment of its people. Through SLGA, Germany assists in facilitating dialogue, networking, knowledge sharing, and awareness raising to address challenges and improve land utilization and development in Africa. We are committed to continue supporting land as a priority policy concern because it is key to the economic transformation of Africa. Let me commend the organization of this conference as a dialogue platform for knowledge and experience sharing, which brings all land governance st stakeholders together to cooperate, and to, to cooperate and learn from each other. We're honored to continue partnering with the AUC, UNECA, AFDB, and Rwanda in this regard in order to achieve a peaceful and prosperous Africa. Thank you very much.
Danke. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, Dr. Thomas Kurtz, the German ambassador to Rwanda. I would like to introduce our next uh, speaker, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Joseph uh, Sacco, the Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy, and Sustainable Environment at the Africa Union Commission. Good afternoon, every one of you. Bonjour à tous les participants. Uh, Honorable Mr. Pra uh, Patrick Carrera, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Environment of the Republic of uh, Rwanda, representing Our Excellency Honorable Jean d'Arc, Minister of Environment of the Republic of uh, Rwanda. Uh, Excellency Mr. Aimé Sakombi, uh, Minister of Land Affairs of the RDC. Merci beaucoup, Excellence, pour votre présence effective dans nos, dans, dans nos délibérations. Madame Aisha, Aisha Touré, uh, African Development Bank uh, Country Manager in the Republic of Rwanda. Uh, Madame uh, Mama Keita, Director Sub-Regional uh, Office of Eastern Africa, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Excellency Ambassador Thomas Cruz, the German Ambassador to Rwanda. Thank you for your support and your presence. Excellencies, representative of various uh, governments, the international partners organization present here, all protocol duly observe. On behalf of the African Union Commission, it, it gives me great pleasure to address this biannual conference on land policy for Africa. Warm greetings from the chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Musa Faki Mohamed. Let me begin by thanking the government of Rwanda for hosting this important conference in this beautiful city of Kigali, despite the fact that we have adopted a, an hybrid approach for both virtual and physical contact, especially for the opening and the closing ceremony due to the COVID-19 pandemic that is still ravaging our continent. I sincerely appreciate all the participants for finding time to attend this event despite the COVID-19 pandemic, while we sympathize with family that have lost their loved ones due to the pandemic since last year, 2020, and enjoy, enjoy all, the, all of you to continue to stay safe by observing all the COVID-19 non-pharmaceutical protocol, during those of, uh, including those of you that have been fully vaccinated until we are able to reach herd humanity, uh, human, humanities. Land is a very emotive uh, issue in Africa as my predecessor have rightly you know, uh, uh, presented here during their statement. It no doubt lies at the heart of social, political, and economic life in most of Africa, where agriculture, natural resources, and other land-based activities are fundamental to livelihood, food security, income and employment. Land is also continues to have major historical and spiritual significance for African, African people. At one time, land seemed an almost inexecutable in, in, in access in Africa, but population growth and market development are creating mounting pressure and competition 
for land resources, especially close to town and cities and in productive high value areas. Competition for land as a result of climate change is a triggering and exacerbating wider conflicts as we are, we are witnessing in the Sahel region. In Southern Africa, the unresolved historical legacy of colonial land alienation underlies the risk of social and political conflicts. In recent years, a surge in the purchase of African land for foreign companies and governments to grow food and other crops for export has also set alarm bells ringing ringing on and off the continent. The management of land is thus a core issue for African governments today. It is dynamic and challenging context. In this dynamic and challenging context, the Conference on Land Policy in Africa is organized biannually, uh, biannually by the African Land Policy Center a joint initiative of the African Union Commission, the United Nations Economic Commission, and the African Development Bank. It brings together a range of uh, interest, uh, interest uh, groups, including African policymakers, academ academics, civil society representative, as well as rep representative of uh, private sector, local authorities, the international agency to debate the way ahead for land policy in Africa. This is a very good platform where we can really share lessons, good lessons, the way we just saw it from, uh, this, uh, from uh, uh, the, the Republic of Rwanda. So it is a very good opportunity to know what is happening. We are many, we are 55 countries, we need to interact more because there are a lot of good news that is happening in our continent. This year's conference, the fourth in the series, is being held under the theme Land Governance and Subguarding Heart, Culture and Heritage Towards the African We Want, in line with the African Union Declaration of uh, 2021 as the Year of Heart culture and heritage levers for building the African we want, which is, uh, uh, is, uh, is under the aspiration number five of the Agenda 2063. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the African Union Declaration on Land urge member states to develop comprehensive land policy and address specific needs of each state and build adequate human, financial, and technical capacity in accordance with the framework and guidelines of the land policy in Africa. As a continent, a lot of initiatives related to land have been implemented, although several African Union member states have progressed in developing land policy and undertaking reform we still witness several challenges in the sector, such as lack of capacity and the trained personnel in land governance institution. I would like to commend the ambassador of uh, the Republic of Germany for all the support on capacity building that is given uh, many African countries. This is uh, compounded by the advent advent of various emerging issues such as COVID-19, climate change, increasing population and urbanization, as well as ethnic and regional conflict, as I previously mentioned. All these have tremendous impacts on the ability of nations to deliver land services, especially when there is competition among land users. Afri the African Union agenda on land is focused on ensuring that we work together to address these different land challenges. Since the last 
2019 conference on land policy in, uh, in Africa that was held in Côte d'Ivoire, we have continued to make progress towards achieving the African Union agenda on land. The African Union Land Policy Center, with the support of uh, GIZ, has progress in establishing the network of excellence on land governance in Africa secretariat. Through the initiative, we have witnessed a lot of capacity being built for several individuals on land governance issues. More importantly, we have also continued to support African Union member states on land policy reform, as well as the improvement of their land administration system. In addition to this, the African Union Commission, in collaboration with other partners, have been working on the development of the land governance strategy, the inclusive development of the, Af uh, the EU land governance strategy is one key initiative that is aimed at ensuring that the views of all stakeholders are integrated in the work, you know, in the work being conducted at the African Union Commission. We have also started progressing in the development of the guidelines for integrating gender in the land sector in Africa. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as we assemble today, let us remember that the overall goal of this conference is to deepen capacity for land policy development, implementation and monitoring with a specific focus on emerging issues and the African Union commitments, including in the land sector through the improved access to knowledge and information in support of evidence-based land policy making. Let me emphasize that the Conference on Land Policy in Africa is a platform for land administrators, non-state actors, private sector, and academia to share information on innovative solutions that are working to secure rights to land and improve land delivery service among our member states. It is also a platform for us to share good practices and land administration. The Conference on Land Policy for Africa is an opportunity for all of us to engage and discuss custom fit land administration solution for Africa. Let us create strong partnership in our quest to improve land governance in Africa. Distinguished delegate, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude by thank, taking this opportunity to thank our esteemed partners that have accompanied us over the year in this journey. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, the African Development Bank, uh, Bank and the African Land Policy Center for their tireless effort in ensuring that the conference is held successfully. I would like to extend my, my sincere appreciation to the GIZ and other cooperating partners who have supported this conference. Let me commend the government of the Republic of Rwanda for engaging on digitalization process on the land governance and land management through the initiative we just saw let me pronounce it very well, Ubutaka, Ubutaka application. Uh, uh, we at the African Union, through my department, Harbe, we are fully committed to mainstream this initiative throughout our continent. I wish you all fruitful deliberation, and I thank you for your kind attention. Merci beaucoup. Muito obrigada, Santisana. Muraz Kose. Thank you.
Her Excellency uh, Ambassador Joseph Asako, Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy, and Sustainable Environment at the African Union Commission. Another hand clap for Her Excellency. Quite the passion and passionate speech. She gave us uh, a historical lesson there and also uh, lessons to pick, uh, especially in regards to uh, Rwanda Zubutaka Initiative, Land Policy Initiative. Uh, I can see my friend uh, Anissa here <laughs> nodding his head. Uh, he is also championing and doing something similar in Ghana. And I hope uh, the media later on can uh, have a conversation with you in regards to how we can scale this on the continent. I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Honorable Sakombi Molendo, uh, the Minister for Land Affairs for the Democratic Republic of Congo. Over to you, sir. Mesdames et Messieurs, leur Excellence, Monsieur le Ministre, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur d'Allemagne, chef de mission diplomatique, très cher envoyé de l'Union africaine et Madame la représentante pays, très cher conférencier, bonjour, je m'appelle Aimé Sakumbi Molendo, je suis le ministre national des affaires foncières de la République démocratique du Congo, et ce, depuis le 26 août 2019. Je suis venu ici non pas pour euh, intervenir, mais plutôt et surtout pour écouter, échanger et partager les expériences. En effet, lors de mon avènement à la tête du ministère des Affaires foncières de la RDC, les statistiques étaient claires. 80% des conflits pendant devant les cours et tribunaux du pays avaient comme origine le foncier. Je répète, du haut de cette tribune, 80% des affaires pendantes devant les cours et tribunaux de notre pays avaient comme origine des conflits fonciers. C'est alors que le président de la République, son Excellence M. Félix Tshisekedi de Chilombo, m'a instruit et instruit le gouvernement d'opérer séance tenante et tous azimuts, toutes les réformes possibles pour inverser cette courbe. C'est ainsi que, très modestement, lorsque nous avons reçu l'invitation de venir participer à cette quatrième édition. C'était une aubaine pour nous, parce qu'en effet, en deux ans, nous avons réussi à rédiger une nouvelle politique foncière qui devra passer bientôt en Conseil des ministres de notre pays, après l'atelier de, de validation, après avoir consulté les 26 provinces que compte notre pays, nous avons donc décidé de venir suivre ce que le Rwanda a fait en particulier et en général toute la politique foncière africaine. Donc notre position est très claire. Nous voulons améliorer notre réseautage, nouer de nouveaux partenariats qui vont donc asseoir notre politique nationale foncière pour une meilleure gouvernance dans ce secteur. La terre doit unir et non diviser. Donc, je souhaite plein succès à cette quatrième conférence. Nous allons suivre de bout en bout tous les ateliers. Nous allons, en marge de cette conférence, établir des contacts directs parce que nous avons, nous, effectivement, beaucoup de problèmes, comme je l'ai dit tout à l'heure. Je peux dire ici, en échantillonnage, que nous n'avons que 15 de titres valables. Les 85 autres titres sont des titres secondaires qui ne sont pas reconnus par la loi, par l'État. 
nous devons donc passer à une conversion des titres. Et là, nous avons été subjugués par ce que le Rwanda a fait, une dizaine de millions de titres numérisés, avec l'accès aux titres en milieu rural. Donc, je souhaite et je réitère donc plein succès à cette conférence. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much uh, to the Minister, uh, Honorable Sakombi Molendo, the Minister for Land Affairs for the Democratic Republic of Congo. I would like to introduce for our closing remarks uh, from the hosts, Randa, uh, from the Ministry of Environment and uh, Lands, the Permanent Secretary, uh, Mr. Patrick Carrera for his remarks. Thank you, sir. Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. I will make it short. I know you have been sitting for a few hours now. Her Excellency Joseph Asako, Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy and Sustainable Environment of the African Union. His Excellency uh, Minister Sakumbi, in charge of land affairs of the Democratic Republic of Congo. His Excellency Ambassador Thomas for, for the Federal Republic of Germany and our co-chair, actually, of Environment, Natural Resource Thematic Working Group in Rwanda. Uh, Mama Keita, the Director of Sub-Regional Office for Eastern Africa of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Uh, Madam Aisa, the Country Manager of the African Development Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. On behalf of the government of Rwanda, and in particular, on behalf of the Minister of Environment, I warmly welcome you all physically and virtually to Kigali and for, to this conference. I'm delighted to be with you this morning to officiate the opening of the Conference on Land Policy in Africa. Rwanda is incredibly privileged and honored to be hosting this conference in 2021. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the last decades on our continent, we have been focusing as governments, working with partners on developing reforms in land policies. This all geared towards enhancing governance and ensuring that we provide security for the land tenure and to give services to landowners through different land reforms. But everything related to land requires strong political will, the buying of the population, and also working closely with other key stakeholders. We also need to think about the support institutions and structures that are required for ensuring an effective land policy space that impacts the continent, especially the most vulnerable. And of course, we need not only commitment at country level, but also to work at regional level to guarantee equity and transpar transparency in managing the most important resources that this continent has. We strongly believe that we need to do so with also bearing in mind the Pan-Africanism spirit. We are currently over 1.3 billion as a population in Africa. We are managing close to 30 million square kilometers. And we also have to take into account the highest 
population growth that we have globally. Uh, above 2%, there are even sub-regions that goes up to 3%. This conference will help us to review and reflect on the impact of land policies in land management on the continent. We will also share as African brothers what has been achieved in different uh, regions. We will also provide uh, a space where we can exchange experience. We take note actually of the request of uh, Excellency Minister Emma from DRC that every country can share experience on the best practices and actually uh, give insight on how we manage to accommodate or address the challenges that we have been having in terms of land management. But I would like to draw your attention on the key challenges that we have and that requires that we innovate more. One is the climate change effect, which is affecting, uh, which is leading actually to a, a tremendous uh, risk of de deforestation and land degradation. We also have the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, which actually almost uh, reduced the economic growth uh, on, at continent level. It is important, therefore, that we need to think about the new innovation for delivering land reform and land services to our citizens. There are different countries that have started developing innovations, including the use of the digital world, the technologies, the online platforms, uh, and complete reform in policies. These experiences should not be lost today, but we all need to have a share, contribute, and have a clear picture on how we can overcome these challenges at continental level. In Rwanda, we are pleased to share that effective land administration has, supposed, has, has supported the increase of agriculture production, promoted investment on land, it boosted also the market of uh, land-related services while also contributing to poverty reduction in general. The issue of land-related conflict is almost common to all African countries. But we can share that with digitization and improving land-related policies, we have managed to almost uh, uh, digitize and provide uh, issue around over 10 million land titles. We are currently undergoing a new phase of using blockchain technology to, re to uh, ease the way of providing the land related transactions. Actually, we intend that if every everything goes well, we will reduce the number of days it takes to provide transaction to seven days up to one working day. But of course, it's, we can't implement the land reform if it is not locally driven, and in most cases, if not of all implemented by the local community. Ownership is very key between the government and public to assess the needs for land reform and work together for its success. When demand of land reform comes from within, we have seen that the chances of successful implementation is naturally higher. As a country, we are steadily building our capacities in the land administration field, but we still also have a long way to get to where we want to be. And this definitely requires that we work together with all the partners. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference has a specific theme of land governance for safeguarding art, culture, heritage towards the Africa that we want. It is aligned with our country commitment to preserve our own history, legacy, and tradition through ensuring that our creative aspects remain in the forefront of our endeavors. 
This is because that Rwanda firmly believe that it is important to uphold tradition and its collective spirit that brings us together. On behalf of the government and on my own behalf, I would like to express special gratitude to the African Union, to the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, to the African Development Bank, and for the Germany government for supporting Rwanda to host this important conference. We also want to appreciate the effort of the organizing committee, both locally and on Africa level, to have actually coordinated us up to this day. Furthermore, we want to appreciate that this conference will also talk different thematic areas beyond land, including climate change, water resources management, and how we can draw positive impacts in adaptation and mitigation to our climate change uh, risk and threats. I expect this conference to be a platform also for academia, policymakers, civil society here present, to share the best practices, research findings, and help us to identify investment opportunities in land policy development and land management in Africa. I take this opportunity to thank you all for your time allocated to this conference, either physically or those who are joining us virtually. And I wish you fruitful discussion during these four days, but also encourage visitors from abroad to visit Rwanda. Land is our common heritage, and we need to continue working jointly to safeguard it for the present and the future generation. I thank you and de declare this conference officially open on behalf of the government of Rwanda. Thank you. Thank you, PS. Uh, thank you, the Permanent Secretary uh, from the Ministry of Environment and Lands uh, of, from the government of Rwanda, Mr. Patrick uh, Carrera. Wow, uh, all good things come to an end, eh? Well, not yet, just not yet. Uh, just a quick reminder that I will be stepping out uh, shortly for lunch. Uh, lunch will be served at the Lada restaurant. After that, we'll have uh, a ceremony or tree planting ceremony. Uh, that will take place. Uh, it's right about now, it's raining heavily. I know you don't feel that in these well air conditioned rooms, but it's still raining heavily. So shortly we'll be stepping out for lunch. Uh, I would like to remind the media to please stay behind for a quick press conference. It will take place here with uh, our guests and our hosts, uh, and that shouldn't uh, take place for more than uh, 20 minutes before we go uh, into our lunch. Uh, ceremony. Once again, I want to thank our speakers this morning, uh, the ambassadors, uh, your excellencies, uh, ministers, and the permanent secretaries. And I want to thank you for being such a great audience, uh, very participatory, for, and for ensuring that we don't have any feedback. The event was being broadcast live on CNBC Africa. So once again, I also want to thank the CUBE team. Uh, I want to thank the team from the Land Policy Africa as well. I want to thank UNECA, African Union Commission, uh, the Rwanda government, RCB, uh, Radisson Blue, and KCC for this brilliant and uh, for ensuring that day one or four starts off this well. For now, I will excuse you uh, to go to lunch and would like to ask the media to please stay behind. Thank you, and thank you for being such a great audience. Bon appétit.
banyita twizere mana apolinaria nkaba nkora hano uhaba mbuza amafaranga hano ku mutuzo sako bwa mbere nagujije miliyoni ndahinga ndeza ubwo majije guhinga mbona menyungu yo bona ifite akamaro kanini ndishura dongera ngo uza mayandi miliyoni n'igice ndacaya koresha ariko ndi kwishura nta kibazo kandi ibyo mpinze ndi kubona biza mu musaro nta kibazo land is not only economic value it also to have a cultural value a social value so when you develop land you try to secure land you develop all the all dimension of development so i think it's, it's that's a point est-ce que nous avons droit à la terre est-ce que nous avons droit à la à nos forêts est-ce que les retombées de nos forêts comment nous allons les, les bénéficier et c'est là que nous avons fait ce recueil dans le cadre de la réforme foncière pour que les gens parce que les gens disent mais vous n'êtes pas vous n'êtes pas connu aucun texte juridique là on écrit le peuple autochtone je dirais comme avec l'organisation depuis en 2000 à 99 jusqu'à 2000 nous avons sensibilisé les chefs du village les propriétaires terriens, c'était difficile avant pour qu'une femme ait la terre même pour produire la nourriture. Mais avec la sensibilisation, parler aux chefs du village, parler aux propriétaires terriens, parler au milieu de la population de la région, ça a permis aujourd'hui que, actuellement où nous vous parlons, nos villages voisins ne peuvent plus s'infiltrer. Personne ne peut venir dire que ses parents étaient ici. Euh, dans notre village, que ses parents avaient ses terres à Bukao et qu'il vient euh, pour la vendre ou bien pour nous spolier. Vous voyez, donc euh, c'est ça l'avantage. Et ça, va, ça nous évite des conflits fonciers entre les autres villages. Les conflits fonciers qui parfois va euh, entraîne des de, de morts d'hommes. When you look at uh, the current uh, efforts to commercialize agriculture, it's good on one hand, on the other hand, if we don't pay attention to governance issues, you find that some farmers might become landless and then uh, that's not what we are looking at. We, want, uh, we just want the farmers to commercialize and to make sure that their, their land uh, rights are secure. It has to be a continuous process. And uh, one good way that I find that is going to help us is to begin to engage the youth now because they are at an age where they can easily absorb new information that is coming and to see change in them would be much easier. So for the future, for the future generations, we can begin That's to correct the problem happy now. happy to have you here, even though for this very um, short period of time. Um, so I won't go through introductions for our distinguished guests. They've been speaking for like 30 minutes, an hour now, so we all know them. But I'm going to give them the opportunity to kind of give like um, an opening statement, then we'll take questions from the press. So, um, in this regard, I, I'll start with um, the order they presented um, earlier today. And um, Ms. Mama Keita, if you could make an opening statement for the press conference. Thank you very much. Good afternoon uh, to, the, to, the, to the press. Uh, the statement just to emphasize the importance of land for Africa development agenda, which is really, uh, I mean, um, given through the agenda 2063 of the continent. This agenda really want to transform Africa economies, African societies, and land is very critical to that. Land management, land governance is critical for Africa's transformation. Land management is also critical for environmental stability. As we just heard the minister from DRC, land is critical for social cohesion. Land can be source of conflict and then disaggregating society. 
But land is critical for Africa's industrialization, the management of land. Africa wants to industrialize to promote agri, um, agriculture development, industrial, uh, the industrial development based on agriculture, and then management of land is critical for that. Land also comes with an issue of equity. Women don't have access to land, they don't have control over land. Same for young population. And then land management, land government, again, is very critical for that. Land management is critical for our tourism. As I mean, I work for, for ECA, Sub-Regional Office for Eastern Africa, and tourism is really, really a great contributor to the economy of East African countries, to job creation, and then the conservation of wildlife is critical for, 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 for tourism. So um, land is important. Land also represents heritage. To make a link with the theme of this year's conference, land is heritage. Land represents identity of African people. And then again, conservation of uh, management of, of land is, um, is cr very critical. And this is why we're gathering here today to promote good government in terms of land management, to see exchange uh, experiences, good practices in terms of land administration, land management, land legislation, land policies, in order to see also experiences in terms of uh, large scale investments um, in, uh, in different countries to learn from here and also maybe to learn from abroad. Let me stop here for now and thank you. Thank you, Mama Keita. Um, so she has kind of set the scene for the um, conversation. Um, I'm going to give the, the same opportunity for all our speakers this morning. And then they would also set the scene and then we could use that as the, um, the platform to ask um, questions. So um, in the order, they made a presentation earlier today. So I'm going to call on Ambassador um, Dr. Thomas Kurtz, if you have a few words to say. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, well, I'm not speaking really here as a, as a participant, as an actor, but, but as, uh, as the representative of the facilitator, of the partner. Germany is very proud that we have been partnering uh, this effort uh, for now, I think, seven years altogether. We have we are partner altogether for 10 years, and we have... Um, uh, the volume of this, uh, the budget of this partnership is nearly uh, 36 million euros, so it's quite considerable. Um, and I'm especially uh, uh, proud that we have been facilitating that we are partnering in this, in this exercise, in this conference today. I may repeat that the uh, objective of, uh, of our engagement uh, is to put African institution and prof professionals into a position to implement improved uh, land policies which strengthen the rights of marginal marginalized groups such as small holder farmers, pastoralists and women. Um, the areas of the action where we are partnering with different implementers and different institutions are the strengthening of uh, strengthening the effectiveness of the network of excellence on land governance in Africa, NELGA, the ex expanding training and education capacities, developing NELGA partners' capacity for research-based advisory, and finally enhancing the access and av availability of data. So these are the uh, focal areas uh, of our of our partnership of our engagement. Thank you. And thank you, His Excellency. Um, I'm going to call on FDB. Um, Dr. James, can you do the same thing? Thank you very much. My name is Yotio James Omozi from the African Development Bank. I'm the Chief Agriculture Economist. I'm uh, giving uh, this uh, interview on behalf of my director, uh, Dr. Morera Emanu. Uh, in regard to FDB, as a development finance institution, our key focus is the poverty eradication. Poverty eradication in Africa. And uh, in, in so doing, we have uh, set up uh, what we call the five high fives. Uh, those are Feed Africa, yeah. Integrate yeah. Africa, modernize, uh, yeah. modernize Africa through industrialization, plus others. But the key fundamental thing within this is that uh, 
the majority of the people in Africa, over 80%, are basically employed in the raw sector, where land is the key driver. So if you have 80% of your people employed in the raw sector, basically on agriculture, and your key focus is on poverty eradication, you, then you know really your focus group. So our focus group is helping basically increase the incomes of the raw people, uh, increase food availability and food security, improve nutrition, and uh, raise their standards of uh, living. And uh, we have uh, gone through the land sector with the, our partnership with the African Union Commission and the UNCA, UNECA, together with the African Land Policy Center. And our work has been through basically helping African governments develop pro poor land policies, try to build institutions for land administration, and try to develop mechanisms for land arbitration where people cannot access land judicial services. We have developed mechanisms in which communities themselves try to arbitrate over land. And uh, we are now working on a program on land digitalization and uh, digital agriculture. This is all towards building, you know, full self sustainers in Africa and reducing the, the food, you know, uh, import bill that Africa is uh, actually incurring. Thank okay, thank you so much. Um, that's a lot of information and data, so I hope the press is taking notes so we can ask questions. And uh, with that, I go to Her Excellency Ambassador Joseph Asako for your remarks. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to really endorse what uh, the previous speaker have said about the importance of land. We at the African Union, we have land as a priority because it is really... Uh, 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 I mean, it is translated in our agenda 2063 that we need really in the aspiration number five, we need to take land as a priority and our head of states and the government, they have put up this agenda, of land agenda on the, on the, at the commission level. So our work as a commissioner, so department is to translate it is translate the desiderata of our head of state into reality. That is why this platform here is very important. This conference gives us the opportunity to really leverage progress and see also challenges. Because as we know that uh, the continent, uh, the demand for food is increasing because of uh, uh, the demographic uh, uh, increase of uh, our population. So we need land. We need land to produce food for our, our, our people. And it is very important that land is, a social, is part of the social economic development for our continent. And we have arable land. We have a lot of arable land to produce to secure uh, food security and nutrition on the continent. Uh, that is uh, why we should not look at land just isolated. It has to be an integrated package of solution whereby women have access to land, the youth have access to land, the government is doing a good governance in terms of the utilization of land. This is very, very, very important for us. And also the conservation of land and our natural resources so that the next generation will come on a sustainable, you know, we, we need to explore this land on a sustainable pattern so that we can give chance to the next generation, African next generation, 60% of our population are the youth, they will need this land. So proper policies by the government, by policymakers, it is very important. That is why we are really collaborating with UNECA and the African Development Bank to ensure that uh, this agenda, land agenda, is there and that our member countries are really applying all these tools that we are developing. We have the tools on the, our shelves. We don't want it to be on the shelves. We want implementation. This is the time for implementation. But Africa is going through acute anger. We have 16 countries, according to the latest report from FAO and IFAD. We have 16 countries that are really going through acute anger 
due to conflict, due to drought, due to whole uh, land deg degradation. So we really need to work hard with this agenda so that we can achieve our, our transformation, our agricultural transformation and feed our people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I love hearing about mainstreaming and integrating land into every process of our life, not as a standalone. So it's really great that you've given us that charge. So I'm going to call on um, Honorable Patrick Ayra from the Ministry of Environment for your own words. Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me thank the, the media for having coordinated together with us uh, in organizing the conference. Uh, and for broadcasting the messages that has to reach really the, the communities as, as we, we speak. Uh, for us as, as a host country, our message is uh, first of all of appreciation to all the partners who supported uh, the organization of the Africa Land Policy Conference. Uh, for the African Union, uh, for the uh, Germany Embassy for the U UNECA and ADB. Uh, they are partners that uh, uh, reflect actually what, what is needed for a successful land policy reform. One is to have exhaustive consultation with all the players. And that is something we are looking forward to engage during this conference, understanding the uniqueness of uh, the culture, the heritage of different countries in Africa, and also sharing experience on how can we overcome some of the critical issues in land, including the land rights, including the tools for its management, including uh, the upgrade and value chain development around land resources. In Rwanda, we look land uh, on both ways. One, it is a natural resources that has to be uh, uh, accessible. Access means having the right to produce uh, and make use of the natural resources that you have. And of course, ensuring that equitability and uh, equity is also reflected. That's why we always encourage to have gender uh, responsive uh, planning, ensuring that all women uh, and men's rights are, uh, are equal when we talk about land resources. We have seen uh, a lot of contribution and changes when uh, we do uh, uh, su such approach in land governance. Uh, currently, actually, the women had the largest share of land uh, occupancy in the country. And this is already supported by the fact that they are many. <laughs> they have also the largest share of the population. But they have, it has inclusively contributed to the poverty reduction. We have done similar, uh, many researches with our partners. We have found that actually the next step should be moving beyond uh, reforming policies, but also coming up with tools for implementation. That's why we encourage countries and our partners to invest in digitizing the land registries. We have seen uh, a, a positive contribution to fast-tracking the administrative procedures that are co correlated with land management, but also creating more business opportunities that actually build from the IT solutions that Africa uh, is aspiring to have as per the agenda 2063. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, innovation is also a tool, it's also a process, and I'm, I love hearing that from you. So with that, we kind of open the floor to um, the media. So please um, introduce yourself, um, keep your questions straight to the point and um, um, address your question to the specific person. Um, what we would also do is, because of time, um, we would also take like one or two at the same time and then we'll move on from there. Yeah. Um, please. 
Okay, thank you very much. My name is Daniel Hachizman. I work for Flash TV. It's a local media here in Rwanda. Uh, I want to ask my question in Kinyarwanda because I want to ask TS uh, uh, from Minister of Environment. Uyu munsi nagira ngo mbaze urwanda ni kimwe mu bihugu ndetse navuga ko kiza kwisonga mu kugira abaturage benshi ese nk'igihugu mufite ngamba ki muri mu gusaranganya ubutaka ku buryo ibibazo twumva handi bifitanye isano n'ubutaka buke bitazaba mu myaka iri imbere murakoze Thank you Is your question also addressed to the PS Is your question also addressed to the PS Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sabiti. I'm a journalist from KT Press. Uh, I have questions for almost each one of you. Uh, for the pilot, uh, for the pilot phase for the Rwanda program of digitalizing the, the land titles, uh, how many have you have you already entered into the, the system, and what are the challenges of using technology in digitalizing land titles? As we, as you, as you well know that. Uh, there are many issues of, and challenges in, with the internet using networks and uh, you know information data keep uh, data management in Rwanda. So uh, give us some challenges because most of the things have, have happened in the ministries in other ministries like for example public service and labour. Uh, ADB ADFB you, you talked about digitalizing agriculture in Africa. Do you have, you're already starting a program. How does that interlink with what is happening in Rwanda? because we're having uh, e-titles e currently being uh, implemented and nowhere else in Africa. Uh, the other question is to Yeneka, uh, Mama Keita. I don't, I don't understand the theme, how does the theme of art, culture and heritage interlink with, uh, with land as, as, an, as an issue to, of discussion in this conference? And for the German ambassador, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kidd, uh, thanks for the commitment for the 36 million, 36 million euros. Uh, are there any further commitments uh, in terms of uh, funding in the next five, 10 years? And what has been the impact of the funding for the last 10 years in terms of numbers? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So we'll take one more, then we give the, uh, the speakers opportunity to respond, and then we'll come back again. Thank you. My name is John Kakuba from Rwanda Broadcasting Agency. My question would actually the general overview about the research that we have ever carried out as a result of the conflict in, 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 as regards the use of the policies that are being implemented in African countries. We have seen several, in several occasions that people kill one another just for a step in a conflict of the communities. Just a step taken from between, then one kills another one. Um, any data as regards the, 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 the conflicts in the land use, and this would be uh, referred to Madam Keita to tell us about the research that you have, have ever carried out about, and how, in general, tell us which country is doing better now and which country is lagging behind as a result of implementing this kind of policy for peace building and development sustainability. Thank you very much. Okay, so we. Um, we have to give the opportunity for them to respond and then ah. we'll come back again to take some questions. But I'm also mindful of, we are also running behind time, so please, um, my dear speakers, when you respond, please keep your response short. I'll start from um, Dr. James and just go down the mic. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the question I'm asking is on uh, digital agriculture, how we are doing it and how it links to what uh, Rwanda is uh, doing. Uh, digital agriculture is done in two processes. One is uh, we do map the farmers, the farmers and their farm holdings, and uh, we look at uh, the terrain of the land, the size of the land, and the crops they are growing. And uh, on one hand also, we do map the input market for the crops. If the farmers are growing maize, you know, but overall we do map on one side, all the input markets for supplies of drugs and upsides and seeds and everything. And on the other side also, we do map extension services, plus even other social services like education and so forth. 
And, and then we link the two together to a point that, uh, you know, it is driven by a satellite, to a point that a farmer at any one time is informed of how his crop is growing. And uh, if there is any problem with the crop, say, for example, maize is being infected by bacteria or by whatever disease it is, the farmer using a phone can take a picture of it and he goes to the nearest internet center and he just scans that photograph to an extension agent. We will be able to tell exactly what the problem is. And the farmer gets a code, including even a kind of a money wallet to earn any food supplier. And they want supplying drugs. And the, the drug is actually delivered, or the farmer is called to pick this drug. And he helps basically to monitor the crop. The, the same thing on one hand with the rain and so forth. The satellites do monitor the rains, and you do inform the farmers when to plant and when to harvest, or when not even to harvest, including even what type of crops to be grown on the nature of the land. And these are interlinked with other international kind of services that are offered by FAO and other organizations. So we have piloted in over seven countries, and we are now doing an upscale, you know, in one of the countries in Africa. And uh, the challenge, of course, is that farmers are locked and to give information. They think their land will be taxed by government. But, but on one hand, they benefit because we give them even out markets where to sell their crops and so forth. Thank you very much. Um, so, Honorable Patrick, I believe you had most of the questions addressed to you. Najango Shimire, Wawaji Chibazo, Chagahunda Zihari, Murkwe Gorgoku, Uchungu Taka, Noku Reva Imbere. Uh, ko twatekanyiriza abaturage kugira abazakomeze kubona ubutaka bwo gukoresha uh, mu muri gahunda zitandukanye ari ubuhinzi ari amashyamba ari imiturire icyo uh, icyambere nuko leta muri uyu mwaka ya yashyizeho itegeko rishya ry'ubutaka mwa raribonye ya riho rikemura ibibazo twari twagiye tubona mu biganiro twajyanye n'abaturage ndetse nishyirwa mu bikorwa ry'itegeko twagenderagaho ryari ryarashyizwe muri 2013 ibibazo bigari byari byaragiye bigaragara cyambere bwari ubutaka imikoreshe y'ubutaka bw'ubuhinzi mu mategeko mashya turemerera abaturage yo kubafasha kubona service ziherekanya ku butaka tutagendeye ku ngano yabwo kuko mbere nkuko mubizi utaka bwari munsi ya gitari imwe ntabwo twa amategeko ntiyemeraga yuko abaturage babuhererekanya ubu murabizi yuko byakemutse mu mategeko twabonaga abaturage benshi bari muri mu ngabo buhinzi bakeneye kuba babukoresha ari ku rwego rwo yihererukanya rikozwe mu bugure kandi bikanaborohera no kubwandikisha eh ibi rero biranunganira na politiki yindi y'ubuhinzi ihari twashyizeho ibishanyo mbonera ku rwego rw'igihugu bigena uburyo imikoreshe z'ubutaka izakoreshwa kugeza muri 2050 igishanyo mbonera cyo ku rwego rw'igihugu cha dukurikije uburyo umubare w'abaturage bacu bagenda biyongera twa hisemo inzira yo kugena umubare narengwa w'ubutaka buzagenda bukoreshwa bitewe n'ibyiciro bitandukanye tubahaye inkurugero gice kinini twabonye twagiharira ubuhinzi kuko dukeneye gutunga abaturage dukeneye ndetse no kongera umusaruro mu buhinzi hejura mirongo ine ku ijana urebye mirongo ine hafi na kane ku ijana y’ubutaka mu gishushanyo mbonera cy’igihugu ku myaka mirongo itatu iri imbere twari twabigeneye ubuhinzi ariko na none tukabona yuko tugomba no kugenera uburyo bw’imiturire bwiza aha abaturage tubakangurira gutura no kubaka bagana hejuru 
igice kitegerejwe kiteganyijwe guturwaho ku rwego rw'igihugu twari twakigize hafi 15 ku ijana ikindi gice tukigira 30 ku ijana tujiharira kwatera amashyamba no kubungabunga ubutaka ariko ibi ngibi turabikora tukanatekereza na gahunda zo kunoza imiturire myiza ari ukorohereza nishora mari ry'abashaka kubaka amazu aciriritse iyo gahunda murayizi ya kubaka amazu mu yo guturwamo affordable housing aha ndetse leta inashyiramo korohereza ishora mari ari no kubafasha no kubabonera ubutaka bata ubutaka bwa leta tukabaha ishora mari kugira bashe no kubaka ibi mwarabibonye kandi ni gahunda tubona yuko yazunganira nimikoreshereze myiza yo butaka are you done? <laughs> so, it's a beautiful language. I'm so, I'm so sorry that I don't know how to speak on um, I can't um, understand it. But I'm sure your answer was, um, you were given an answer to your question. There so, was also a question related to, to, to the safety of the IT system that we are developing and how do we ensure that the network is sustained right and scaled up? Yes. On that, we are coordinating with RISA to make sure that the, the platform that we develop actually speak to each other. So the compatibility aspect and safety, as well as confidentiality, is a core element as we upgrade our systems. So we have actually a cross-sectoral team that is led by RISA that supports the network and the data upgrading and to give you assurance that the application, land application system is also interconnected to other government systems. We will be able to access actually these services through IREMBO, which provide a centralized platform for government services. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, data protection and security is really key. Um, I think there was a question for ambassadors. I think I'll go to Mama Keita. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. I think there were two questions. I'm more comfortable responding the first one. Um, this is about the link between land and the theme of the conference, linking land uh, matters to, to heritage, to, to culture. Let me first speak about at the individual level or at the household level. Land is transmitted from family to family, from household to household. So it's a sort of identification element actually. So it has very, very um, a big importance for, for those people, for those families also. It is uh, an asset for them. It is a reason of pride also for them. So it has a cultural and identity uh, um, element in it. But uh, when you take it also at the, um, let's say, macroeconomic level or at the country level, land also represents the identity of a country. Imagine, I'm sure you know Gore. Gore, this, uh, I mean, uh, tourist site in, uh, in Senegal, that is linked to slavery, history of Africa. The same in Zanzibar here, the same in Benin. Imagine that there is no government uh, go land governance and someone goes and transform this site into industrial park or something like that. This is destroying the history, the identity of those countries and really erasing a big chunk of Africa's history. So land has a very big element of history, of culture, of heritage. And it is very important to have a strong governance to know how to manage it while it is still used to, um, to, to provide for livelihood. The commissioner talked about food security, the link between them is important. At the same time, it is really important to preserve. And then for the population to understand the importance of these things, uh, cultural um, uh, tools or sectors are really important. The creative industry, the film, storytelling, visual arts, it's, they are very powerful communication tools that bring anyone to understand the importance of land for at the individual level but also at the country level and being a source of conflict communication is really really important in terms of land management in terms of understanding the governance and the legislation and everything around it now for the link uh, for the the work of um that is being done around um around uh, um land at the land policy center at eca i have my colleagues who can tell you more about that? She's uh, part of the leaders in this center, and maybe you can exchange later on. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mama Keita. Um, so um, I think the last question goes to Ambassador Thomas Cross. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Um, perhaps let me just briefly explain uh, that our our cooperation with Africa, with African countries, is taking place on several levels. We have uh, one, and we're dealing with this level today, uh, with the continental level. We, so we cooperate through the African Union. Uh, another level is a regional, a regional one. For example, here in the case of Rwanda, we work through the East African community. And finally, this in the end is certainly the biggest the, uh, uh, the biggest part of our cooperation is on, on in, in individual countries, so bilateral cooperation. And of course, I would be, as an ambassador to Rwanda, be more entitled to speak on bilateral cooperation than the one on the continental level. But nevertheless, uh, let me briefly try to answer your question. Um, the program we are talking about, and it's called the Strengthening Advisory Capacities for Land Governance in Africa. That's the title. It started in December and will last until uh, December uh, 2014. It will last uh, 10 years until the end of uh, 2024. Um, I already mentioned the budget of, uh, of uh, 36 million euros, and we have a number of implementing partners, uh, especially its uh, African and U European universities. All this is being channeled through the African Union. Um, you have been asking for achievements. Yes, there are a number of them, uh, although there are challenges still ahead. Um, what we do have achieved is we have implemented a comprehensive analysis of existing curricula for land policy of African universities as a starting point. Then we have developed guidelines for curricula on, on land governance in Africa, for masters and PhD programs. Uh, we, have or, we have already awarded 41 scholarships for students at different universities in Africa. And, uh, and in addition, we have uh, facilitated a certain a number of research programs in, with the same regard. I think that's about what I what I'm in a position to, to share with you at this point. Thank you very much. Um, so because of time, I would just say uh, only one question from this gentleman of the press because he raised his hand first, so please permit me for that. So as, um, I think that's the only question we're going to take and then we can bring the press conference to a close. Mon nom c'est André Gakwaya. Je travaille pour l'agence rwandaise d'information Rwanda News Agency. Je voudrais poser ma question à Madame la Commissaire de l'Union africaine et pour le développement rural, économie bleue. Bon, j'ai deux questions. Au niveau du continent, et il y a, et avant il y avait un problème d'égalité du genre devant la loi, et l'accès à la terre devant la loi, le droit à la terre pour les enfants, filles et garçons. Et ici au Rwanda, ce problème a été réglé. Garçons et filles ont tous des droits égaux quand ils doivent hériter d'une terre de leurs parents. Et est-ce que c est, c est, c est, cet exemple est, est suivi par tous les pays africains Ou est-ce qu'il y a, quels sont les pays où il y a encore des lacunes et les 54 pays en Afrique Combien de pays ne respectent pas encore cette orientation qui est la base même de l'égalité du genre et de l'accès au revenu à la terre Et ma deuxième question, et grâce à l'appui de, de la FAO, et à, au niveau de ni, GPS, on a utilisé le GPS pour euh, comptabiliser, compter, et, enfin, pour compter le nombre d'hectares dont dispose le continent, le nombre de forêts et de surfaces cultivables qui sont cultivées. Et, et, et grâce à ce, ce qu'on appelle ça GPS, on a pu trouver quand on a utilisé ces éléments, et la, la forêt ne cache plus les arbres. C'est-à-dire dans une forêt immense, on peut compter chaque arbre. Aucun arbre n'est oublié. 
De même, quand on compte la surface est cultivée, et aucun hectare n'est oublié. Et si parmi vous, il y en a qui sont au courant de cette bonne recherche récente, l'avantage qu'offre cette recherche pour l'ensemble du continent et pour l'exploitation de notre terre et de nos forêts, vous pourriez nous en parler plus précisément. Je vous remercie. Thank you. So I believe that question is to the commissioner. So we didn't miss you after all. <laughs> Merci beaucoup pour le, la, la, la question que vous m'avez posée. Euh, je, je commence avec la première question. Quand vous dites qu'il faut vraiment l'égalité, l'égalité de genre et l'accès au foncier, l'accès à la terre. Euh, je voulais profiter pour vraiment féliciter la République du, du Rwanda qui, qui tient qui tient à ces, à ces principes d'égalité, l'accès à la terre, la jeunesse et les femmes. C'est vraiment un bon exemple, mais je n'ai pas de statistiques pour vous situer sur le progrès qui sont faits au niveau de, des autres pays africains. Peut-être l'UNECA qui, est, qui est ici et la CIA peut nous donner des, des statistiques de quant à l'accès aux au fonciers dans, le, dans, le, dans la perspective du genre. Et je sais qu'il n'y a pas beaucoup de pays africains qui, qui, qui euh, 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 comment, met en œuvre cette décision de chef d'État. Il n'y a pas beaucoup. Je n'ai pas de, sta de statistiques, mais je sais qu'il y a très peu. Je peux dire que même euh, dans les 54 pays ou 55 pays, en Union africaine, on dit 55, 55 pays, je crois que ce n'est même pas 10 de pays qui, euh, qui, qui ont le même modèle ou bien la même pratique que le, que le Rwanda. Ça, ça, ça c'est vraiment... On, on, on voit le constat que les femmes n'ont pas accès. C'est pour cela, au niveau de l'Union africaine, nous sommes en train de dire que la femme doit avoir droit au foncier. Nous avons créé une plateforme pour la mécanisation, l'accès à la mécanisation, l'accès à l'irrigation et l'accès au foncier et aux finances pour la femme et aussi la jeunesse. Quand on, on essaye de mettre tous ces deux euh, clusters de, de la société ensemble. Donc ce sont des efforts qu'on est en train de faire et je crois qu'on fait beaucoup de, de, euh, de, de séminaires, de webinaires pour euh, quand même sensibiliser nos, nos États membres pour qu'ils puissent être dans le modèle que le Rwanda fait. Vraiment, c'est un modèle. Moi, la semaine dernière, j'étais avec la ministre de l'Agriculture quand on parlait du foncier dans un webinaire. Et puis, elle a parlé de ce que nous, on a vu là-bas dehors, l'enregistrement digital, mais en couple, que la femme a 50%, l'homme 50%. Elle a parlé de ça, elle a présenté cette euh, initiative euh, euh, rwandaise euh, ici. Euh, pour la deuxième question sur euh, la FAO, ce qu'ils font vraiment, c'est un aspect euh, sur euh, le problème de, vous avez dit, c'était pour euh, le, euh, comment dirais-je, GPS, voilà, voilà, pour, voilà. ça, je je, 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 pas, je suis pas trop bien cette technique, c'est trop technique, nous sommes plus dans l'élaboration des politiques et stratégies. Euh, je n'ai pas euh, ma, ma, mon assistante euh, qui est dans, euh, qui, elle n'est pas dans la salle, je ne sais pas si elle est online, pour pouvoir vous donner des précisions, parce que c'est elle qui travaille au niveau technique avec la FAO. Merci. Thank you so much. Uh, um... I can... I can respond to the, okay, to the land ahead. degradation issue that uh, he raised. Actually, six years ago, there was a study that revealed that 65 percent. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. So, 65 percent of uh, agriculture land was facing land degradation. That was a study that was done on, in Africa. The measures that have been taken was actually to start what we called Africa uh, 100 initiative, AFL 100 initiative, to restore 100 million hectares by 2030. So it's a, a commitment that 
is ongoing now. We can uh, inform you that so far 31 ca countries have already committed to restore 128 million hectares by 2030. Uh, we have costed the, the cost of uh, that landscape restoration. It, re it shows that it requires almost 1 billion in development finance and 481 million from private sector financing. Of course, the initiative draw attention of different partners. We have so far 33 partners. On the side of Rwanda, we have committed to restore 2 million hectares of land, of degraded land by 2030. Uh, of course, with landscape restoration initiative. So far, since the commitment, we have managed to restore 40% of uh, the degraded area, close to 800,000 hectares. That is the status, thank you. Thank you very, very much. And then with this, I have to really bring this to a close. I know there's just a lot to talk about. Um, I want to use the opportunity to say a special thank you to the international media who have joined us online. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't take any of those questions because we have such an engaging, rich conversation right here. Um, I'd also like to thank our speakers for giving us the opportunity to stay here. We know we started late, but you know, you've You've given us your time, you've given us your experience, we are grateful for that. Uh, most especially to the media in the room, we are grateful for your time and we hope to see uh, coverage of this event in the press. If you're looking for clarification for names and designation, my colleague Sophia can also help you with that. And with that, I bring the press conference to a close. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for joining us for the opening ceremony of the 2021 Conference on Land Policy in Africa. We invite you to continue engaging with the rest of the conference virtually. Thank you.